What's up guys, Boris here, and we are on our way to the Dark Continent. I really can't believe it. I really th thought there'd be a couple months before we actually got on the boat uh, on the, to the journey to the Dark Continent. What turns out is that Togashi said, screw that, we're going to go straight into it, which is really cool. I thought there would be uh, you know, at least 10 more chapters of setup, but as it turns out, we are, we're already there, <laughs> already on our way. So what today might have seemed like a slow chapter actually speeds up the story a lot because uh, no more having to do with setup. The rules are already established. From now on, it's, it's each one fend out for themselves. Now, there's a couple of things that are really important that I want to point out. So first off, uh, let's go ahead and start about the end of the chapter. <laughs> Nen Beast, I guess, is what the thing was. Um, I, I think that the reason that, that the baby started to manifest the Nen Beast uh, was due to the change in uh, emotions that he sensed from his mother. Uh, the mother said that she was ready to die along with Wobble, but it turns out that now she's getting a little bit of hope. Uh, Kurapika has given her some hope. And so that change of emotion might have caused the baby to really uh, want to protect the mother even more, thus creating the Nen Beast, which of course the normal bodyguards aren't going to be able to see, but Kurapika could obviously sense it. So, very, very cool. I cannot wait to see what his actual Nen Beast looks like. And it might be that his might be one of the strongest ones out of all of them. I don't know. You have to wait and see, but, you know, it really depends not just on the Nen Beast for survival, but it's also going to depend on the Hunters which are going to be guarding each of the princes. So I can't wait to see what other hunters might come back or whatever. I don't, I'm not sure if they will. But obviously, if you remember a couple chapters back, they set up which one of the princess, each one of the Kurapika, uh, not clan, but Kurapika group is going to be with. So I'm excited to see how that interaction is going to uh, be. Uh, that's going to be really helpful because Kurapika will now know exactly where each of those uh, other what four or five princess will be at the same time. So that, that's going to give them a huge edge, as well as the other princes. It's going to give them a huge edge in the survival game. So I'm really interested to see uh, that. And, uh, and of course, this is important because most of those princes are are the one, the lo on the lower, on the younger princes. So I think it's like the, the 14th, uh, the 12th, the 10th, the 11th, I want to say. Uh, or no, maybe the, the 13th. And then uh, there's maybe like the 8th or something. So uh, I can't wait to see how this whole journey is going to pan out. Now, they talked about some forging tickets. And, I've, you know, at first I would think... Maybe Kurtopi's behind this because Kurtopi would be able to forge perfect tickets. But now that he's dead, um, I don't know what it could be. Maybe he, maybe Krolo had planned. I mean, obviously Krolo had planned to go to the Dark Continent, so maybe ahead of time he asked Kurtopi to clone some tickets. But then, if he died, I would assume that the tickets would disappear. So I don't think this is necessarily the Phantom Troops. Uh, responsibility. Uh, it could be some other clan. Obviously the Phantom Troop will be on the ship. And so the interesting thing is, since we cut straight away to the journey, have any of the Phantom Troop members died uh, in the in the meanwhile? And I don't believe that that would have happened. Maybe potentially one or two, but I don't think Togashi would have killed them off screen. Um, but maybe he did. I don't know. So that's going to be something that I can't wait to find out. Are all the actual Phantom Troop, the rest of the remaining Phantom Troop members there? Who was the 10th Phantom Troop, which we still don't really know too much about, the missing one? And uh, yeah, that's going to be really interesting to find out once we do get around to the Phantom Troop. Now, I think that Leorio is going to play a huge role in this arc because we just got info that a lot of the medical staff was just not there. Uh, the Kokin Empire didn't really plan things well <laughs> and they actually ended up being short staffed. So who do we know on the ship right now is a doctor? Well, it happens to be Leorio. Leorio, now we know, it is, is, should be there because he's one of the Zodiacs now. So hopefully uh, he can play a huge role in this arc. It might be that he might play a minor role due to this because he might just be helping the wounded uh, for most of the arc. But I do think that Oda's, I mean, <laughs> Togashi is going to... Uh, play this uh, play into this at some point. So I can't wait to see exactly what Leorio is gonna do Obviously, I wanted to see him at least one fight as well, but Leorio come on we, we know he's not one of the strongest guys out there So this would be an awesome way for him to be involved in the arc without actually having to fight a powerful Nen user Now the important part in my opinion the most important part about this whole arc or this whole chapter is the fact that they established the rules uh, Which will govern the way things are handled on the ship. So first off we know that the way it's the way that the scheduling will be done the princes won't really have to uh, They won't have to see each other as they're passing by on the ship uh, It's gonna make they're gonna be sure that every single prince 
uh, moves at a certain time so that they don't have to see each other. The only time that they will see each other is, I believe, on Sundays. Uh, there's one day of the week where they will meet together, uh, just all of them at the same time. But at that point, you can't really attack one prince because if you do, the others will attack back. Uh, so you have to be really, really uh, ballsy to go ahead and try to attack the princes when they're all in one spot. Uh, so it's going to make it really interesting. It's going to be like a, a, a game of cat and mouse, you know. Even though you're not really going to be able to catch one uh, uh, off guard, maybe you can get your Nen user to attack them somehow, you know. So it's going to be really interesting. It's going to really, you know, the bodyguards will have to be on point. The the you know the, the, the hunters, whether they're actual hunters or the you know the newly uh, established hunters, uh, they will have to really. Uh, know what they're doing otherwise they're gonna get their prince killed immediately so you know there's that and also are there any traitors you know because uh, you know who knows maybe someone who's working for you might not actually be working for you so I'm excited to see just this journey I tweeted out a couple days ago saying that this might be one of my favorite arcs by the end of it and I can't believe it actually already started that's insane uh, let me know what you guys think about this arc are you guys excited what do you guys think that the uh, the Nen Beast for Wobble is gonna look like or do you guys think he'll be pretty strong do you guys think he'll be pretty weak in my personal opinion I think that uh, his, his want his desire to protect his mother is gonna make it a very strong Nen Beast um, but then again who knows what we do know is that they're not attached to the person so if it is a strong Nen Beast it's gonna wreak havoc and I can't wait to see what's gonna happen so can't wait for next uh, no no hiatus so far which is awesome and I can't wait for next week's chapter of Hunter Hunter let me know your thoughts down below and until next time thanks for watching